think, I think one of the big misconceptions of the role of pathologists is something I want to try to, to, to fix on. Um, I'm a lung pathologist at the uh, McGill University Health Center. Um, and I want to explain what the role of the pathologist is. And uh, my colleague, uh, Jonathan uh, Kulzik, um, he, uh, he touched a bit, a little bit on it. So I think part of it, uh, we'll try to figure it out. Um, traditionally, pathologists have been associated with autopsies and dissections of cad cadavers. Um, and, and really, um, some of them have been considered uh, grave robbers, too. Um, but that's not really what a pathologist does anymore. Um, right now, just to give you a sense of, of a perspective of, of what we do, uh, 138 surgical, thousand surgical and psychological specimens per year are diagnosed at just the MUHC Glenn site. Uh, and that's compared to just the 300 autopsies that are actually performed at the hospital. And these are actually declining. So our, our job as pathologists is really in the diagnosis of patients' diseases when they're alive and require treatment. Uh, this is Sir William Osler. He's known for, quote, as is our pathology, so is our practice. He's an interesting uh, physician. He's uh, known as the founder of modern medicine. And actually is uh, a McGill alumnus uh, and professor, and uh, a th uh, pathologist, too. Um, so here's the uh, picture of McGill University Health Center Glenn site. This is uh, the super hospital that's found at the, uh, the bottom of the Cary Boulevard, uh, the, the, Car the Cary Highway. And um, you, you don't actually see the pathology, where the pathologist's offices are, because actually they're, they're behind the building. Um, and I like to think that the architecture of the gun is, is mimicking what actually happens, where pathologists are, are behind the scenes um, and doing their work. Uh, and the pathologist department is actually, it's on the fourth floor. Traditionally, pathologists were thought to be working in the, the, in the dark, in the basement. Um, that's not actually the case. Uh, we're actually in the same building as the Research Institute, so uh, I think that it, it also helps to think that pathology works hand in hand with research for the better uh, men of, the, of our patients. So uh, Jonathan um, showed a little bit of, and, and Nicole also showed the similar slides. Uh, the specimen source is the human body. It's the, the source of disease, and that's what pathologists uh, is, is trying to diagnose. So the, the specimen source come from many different sites. It could just be a, a simple skin, uh, a mole on your skin that's excised by a dermatologist to uh, a natural, like a radio radiologist um, um, targeted um, biopsy of a lung cancer uh, with a CT or as Nicole showed, a bronchoscopy. Oh, or can it be as, as what Jonathan uh, showed, just a, a complete surgical resection of the specimen. And all of these specimens make their way to the pathology department uh, where they're sorted out uh, and uh, given out to the different pathologists for diagnosis. So I'll, I'll just show a little bit of uh, what we do with a lung cancer, one of the specimens that uh, our surgeons would give out. So these are uh, the crux of um, what we call the TNM system. So uh, we'll, we'll go through the different elements. Uh, but in, in a large surgical specimen, we look at tumor size, the lymph nodes, that, that is the spread of disease, and the margin status. So the TNM uh, staging system is part of the AGCC Cancer Staging Manual. This is the American Joint Cancer Committee on uh, Cancer. And it's composed of three elements, a T, an N, and an M. The T part, the T staging in lung cancer is associated with the actual size of the tumor. So the pathologist's job in this case is just to measure uh, with, a, with a ruler how big the tumor is. The end staging, that's the lymph node status, and that's how much um, the, the tumor has spread locally to the lymph nodes that are found in the chest. And finally, the M stage, that's uh, assessing whether there's tumor that's progressed outside into the body, uh, the brain, even the other, the other lung is considered uh, distant metastases, uh, the liver or other organs. 
So the TNM together uh, will help give us prognosis on the patient. And the pathologist's job is partly uh, to help that. And we can see the difference. Someone who has a low stage lung cancer has a fairly good uh, survival, uh, such as uh, even after five years, the, uh, the, 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 the time frame that uh, my colleague mentioned. You can see at the, at the top of the, uh, the list, a stage 1A, Has a, has a fairly good survival up to 90% uh, after five years, while a, high, a, a larger tumor with lymph nodes that are affected will show very poor survival after five years. The other uh, key element that the pathologist is involved with is, is assessing uh, basically quality assessment of the surgeon. Um, the, uh, then that's a, an assessment of the margin. Essentially, it's answering the question, is the cancer all out from, the, the, from, from my body during the surgery? So if you have a, a cancer with a very, um, a rim of normal tissue surrounding it, and this is the edge, which is the, known as the margin, where the, can, the, the surgeon actually uh, cut, then uh, we can see that these margins are negative. Essentially, the cancer is taken all out. But if, in this scenario, the tumor makes its way to the edge and the surgeon cut here, presumably there's still cancer left in the patient and more aggressive therapy will be needed. So as the uh, tissues make their way through the pathology lab, they end up in an, uh, these paraffin blocks. And these are cut on, this is a, a, a machine called a microtome. These are cut by uh, pathology technicians. So the, the tissue here, let's say this is our lung cancer, it's cut in very thin sections. These are three microns thick, so it's, it's three thousandths of a centimeter. Uh, sorry, three thousandths of a millimeter. The, the much thinner than any, any hair, uh, a hair follicle. And these are put on glass slides. Now, the tissues are transparent, so we need to uh, stain them with various chemicals, and that'll help us uh, in our diagnosis. So here's an example of a tray of slides. This is a lung cancer case that I, I worked on uh, last week. And you can see here uh, the different parts to it. So th the first few uh, slides on a cancer case, these are actually the lymph nodes that the surgeon took out during the operation. So we assess those two. And here's uh, a picture, uh, one of the slides that has the actual cancer on it. So the actual, the other element that we're involved with in the diagnostic element is looking at the histological type. And we can't really do that just from the, just looking at the slides. We actually have to look at these under microscope. So I spend a lot of my day looking down uh, microscope. Uh, here's one of our lung pathologists, Dr. Uh, Fraser. This is actually a picture of my son. He's playing around with the microscope. Um, he's a pathologist in training. Um, so here's a picture of one of the slides that I look at. And it, I mean, to many in the audience, the, uh, and even to some of my, my colleagues, uh, it's hard to interpret these. So I, I, you have to do a lot of training to be able to interpret these. But essentially, the, 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 the atypical cells, the cancer cells that uh, Nic uh, Nicole was mentioning earlier, these are found all along here. These, it's maybe a little hard to see, but these are dark cells. They're very big. They're very strange looking. And a pathologist can look at this and tell you right away it's cancer, but not only what, uh, that it's cancer, what type it is. And that's one of the important uh, uh, elements that the pathologist is involved with. So this is what's called an adenocarcinoma. Here's another picture of another cancer. This time, uh, the cancer is, is here, and it's a fairly large aggregate of cells forming a very complex structure, and it has a formation of, of what, what this is called keratin. Uh, this is very similar to what's seen in, in the skin, but this time it's uh, part of the cancer. And using, the pathologist can look at this pattern and tell you that the diagnosis is a squamous cell carcinoma. And that'll have implications as to what treatment uh, will come and what, uh, what um, uh, decisions are done based on uh, next testing. Sometimes we run into a situation where it's very difficult to do the diagnosis. So we do um, special techniques in the lab, and we use special machines 
um, such as immunostochemistry to help us out. So immunostochemistry is essentially, we use special uh, chemicals that will stain the slide, the cells uh, brown, and that'll help us in the diagnosis. And immunostochemistry actually targets uh, specific chemicals, uh, specific proteins that are expressed by the tumor. Um, this is an example of TTF1 uh, immunostochemistry. So it's the, the immunostochemistry is staining the TTF1 protein. And t TTF1 protein is highly expressed in adenocarcinoma. So I, I can look at this and say, well, this is brown, this is an adenocarcinoma. So it makes our jobs a little bit easier. Um, so we'll, we'll go into biomarker diagnostics. Um, this is the Jewish General Hospital where a lot of our biomarkers are actually uh, tested for in pathology. Uh, so biomarkers have been shown in the, in the last couple of decades to be very beneficial for treatment um, using uh, agents that can target specific mutations. This is an example of ALK. Uh, it's a little bit old, but this is the, the first paper that showed uh, ALK, which is a mutation. And my, my colleague, uh, uh, Logan Walsh, will explain what mutations are. Um, and th so this patient has an ALK mutation, and he was given uh, the drug crizotinib, and you can see this is the left lung, uh, and not too long after, there's a, a miraculous change where almost all the tumor was gone. And the, all these patients here had the ALK mutation. You can see this, this graph. A lot of these patients actually uh, had a significant response. And what pathologists do for, uh, in helping determining this is actually looking at the expression of these biomarkers. So again, we can go back to that technique of immunostochemistry and see brown is positive. So this patient has an ALK positive mutation and would be eligible for that treatment. Uh, my colleague uh, Jonathan mentioned a little bit about checkpoint inhibitor uh, immunology. Um, I won't go into the details because it's a little bit complicated but uh, it was actually uh, part of what uh, a, a few weeks ago was announced as the Nobel Prize uh, winning uh, for, uh, in medicine for uh, two of the scientists who discovered uh, this, this pathway. So it's, it's quite significant, and a lot of patients have benefited from the, this therapy, and this is a very uh, new and hot topic in uh, lung cancer. And the role of the pathologist this time is again to assess whether these patients are expressing these checkpoint inhibitors, such as PDL1, and you can see brown is positive. So it's, it's very simple. Well, some of it's a bit more complex than that, but at least this case, it's, it is easy to see that this is a, a positive case, and this patient would be eligible for PDL1 treatments. So can we do more than immunistic chemistry? The answer is yes. So actually, wh what's done at the, the hospitals now is, is DNA is taken from the sample. So the, the slides here are cut like the same way that they do for the diagnosis. But this time, the DNA is taken from this. And there we can look at different mutations. One of these is EGFR. And uh, using different sophisticated techniques in molecular uh, biology, we can look for different mutations in the genes that can offer, uh, uh, s we'll, s we'll see mutations that can cause sensitivity to different medications, but also resistance. So we can test for that. Uh, but can, are we limited to just one gene at a time? Can we do more? And the answer is yes. And this is actually the current standard of care uh, right now at the NUHC. Glenn, we actually test a, a panel of 15 genes to see if there's any of these biomarkers that can be used for treatment for our patients. And currently we're working on validating an even a larger panel. We can test for 52 different mutations at the same time. And hopefully one of these can be used um, uh, for treatment decisions. The other role the pathologist has is providing tissue uh, for research and uh, spe specifically for biobanking. So biobankings are uh, large um, uh, infrastructures where tissues are stored and, and research scientists can, can uh, analyze uh, interesting questions to help uh, look for um, maybe a cure for lung cancer. And the, the, the biobank that's present at the, the, McGill, the, the Glenn Center, the, at the MUHGRI, is uh, one that, has, that uses state-of-the-art robotic um, 
tools to, to help uh, work out this biobank. It's actually the largest biobank infrastructure in Canada and has a capacity of 500,000 specimens. So quite a bit of uh, tissue can be stored there. So in conclusion, the field of pathology um, has evolved tremendously. We, we provide not only the diagnosis and the elements for staging, but we're also now part of, uh, at the stage where we can incorporate biomarkers, and this can lead to the concept of personalized medicine. So we can find a specific mutation associated with the cancer, and this can allow for uh, better uh, treatment. This is, not, um, of course, the pathology department is, has a big, uh, is a big enterprise. It has, if you're talking about 100,000 specimens per year, so I'm backed by a large department. I can't leave here without uh, plugging in something interesting. Uh, other activities pathologists are involved. We're also involved in education of, of McGill uh, medical students, but uh, one of our pathologists, uh, Dr. Richard Fraser, he's actually the curator of the Maud Abbott Museum. So the Maud Abbott Museum was just recently renovated. It's found on, uh, at the Strathcona building on, on the campus. And uh, they actually have a pathology exhibit that's used for medical uh, education, but also open to the public. Thank you. All right, so from hearing from pathologists, we'll now switch gears